All right. Hello, YouTube. We had a pretty massive patch drop today, um, or patch notes rather for the open beta. And I just wanted to cover that. So this is the watcher update. Um, what they've been talking about, it's mainly focused on a lot of rebalancing, um, but there's some pretty crazy changes in here that I wanted to go over. So the first thing is research scaling. They say the way knowledge costs are determined for skills in tomes has changed uh, instead of the tier of the skill determining the cost, the knowledge cost is now based on the amount the to of tomes you've collected so far. So basically every tome you pick up increases the cost of further tomes, regardless of whether that's a tier three tome or a tier one tome. So this is really put in place one to slow research down um, and then two to uh, prevent you from dipping into a lot of tier one tomes too easily, picking up a bunch of unit enchantments, that kind of thing, um, and just throwing off the balance of the game generally. So the general cost of tome skills is increased, especially near the mid and late game. Um, and then first tome costs 200 research, second tome 400, third 600. So we can see it scales up here to 5,000 um, is the base cost for a skill on the 12th tome. And then every tome after that is an additional 1,000. So this is really, really going to slow down research in the end game um, and make builds totally different. Um, honestly, this is a pretty fundamental change to the way the game is played. Um, and it's really going to redefine all of our builds. Really, we've been playing in the Wild West of Age of Wonders 4. And this is going to start to civilize things, make people fit into specific niches for their builds um, rather than just picking up every unit enchantment that is good for the type of unit that you're running. Um, so they reworked magic victory um, rather than building those three items and then counting down your three turns. Um, on selecting your first tier three tome, you get a new global research skill that lets you bind a gold ancient wonder. Um, and it lets you target ancient wonders in your in your empire. Well bound, they provide a research bonus, um, and then a certain number of them are needed to cast the Age of Affinity spell, which is your new magic victory spell um, that you can cast once you reach a tier five tome. Um, and it seems like the amount of golden wonders is that's required to win is scaled based on the size of the map. Um, and there's no longer going to be that army, um, the AI armies that are sent to stop you. Um, they think that they've improved the AI enough of um, the actual enemy rulers that they'll be able to attack you. And then summon and casting changes. Uh, we've added a system to limit how many spells can actually be launched each turn. This is a great change, as well as tightening the rules around where units can be summoned. Um, so summoning spells can now only be targeted on cells next to your city and your ruler. They could be previously targeted on any, any visible hex. This is fantastic for just preventing, um, like harass. So you can get a scout into the back line and then just summon units, um, and harass, raise tiles, capture outposts that don't have walls, that kind of thing. Um, this is going to prevent all of that and make the back line harder to access. Um, you are still able to summon around your ruler, um, which means that summon spells will still have um, a pretty strong place compared to recruiting from your cities. But this does limit that a little bit. And it also limits kind of um, the shenanigans you can do while creeping with um, summoning in units like exactly at one camp, killing them, moving to the next camp so that you can kill two or three camps per turn. Um, with your ruler stack, but not too huge of a nerf, but I think it just rounds out some of the edges of, edges of summoning spells. And then they've added a limit of casting one spell per turn on the world map. Um, and then this can be extended to two by building the channeling chamber in your wizard's tower. Great to see a buff to the channeling chamber, more of a use for it. And then limiting the world map casting spells is fantastic. That prevents you from nuking enemies down. It's still going to be pretty tough in like a 3v3, for example, where three players can cast nukes on one army. Um, but for 2v2s, 1v1s, this is pretty much going to remove nuking enemies on the world map. And we'll just let you get a little bit of uh, chip damage before you actually take a fight. 
So map improvements, they've tackled several elements of map generation that we've seen community feedback on. Uh, the focus will be on improving underground, but they've touched up everything overall. Um, so they renamed it. They added a very large setting. So they increased, um, they added a another larger setting um, default, which is great because we don't have to rely on mods to do that then. I've yet to see how far this is, but hopefully um, this is a good distance to play matches at. They changed continent generation. We're not too concerned about that. Never play continents. Not until they buff the water or really rework how water works are we going to play um, with continents. Cities can now annex provinces on the opposite layer through underground. This is possible when both provinces on when provinces on both sides of the underground are annexed. This is really interesting. Um, this looks like you can found a city below ground, annex above ground, and vice versa. Um, just gives us access to better tiles on both cities. Um, so excavating, great change though here. Excavating no longer spawns a roaming stack of monsters that follows you. You can now uncover infestations and guarded nodes instead. This is great. Again, just more nodes underground, infestations underground. It's just going to make it a more valuable place to be. Um, improved player placement in the underground to better take into account the position on the surface. Also fantastic. So this means you'll get a better spawn on the surface and you'll also be able to settle that if you do underground adaptation, for example, you can annex above ground and you'll have uh, better priority there for like an open space with a lot of resources. Okay, so rebalance the AI. Honestly, I'm not too concerned about this and I don't really want to go into a lot of these um, in too much detail. The overall gist of it though is that they've changed some logic so that the AI will be more lenient and aggressive within its units. They've reduced the upkeep discount. Um, so basically all of this cheating um, that the AI was doing because they've made it smarter, they've also reduced the uh, handicap benefits that it got. So they, have, they pay closer upkeep. They no longer have stat bonuses on very hard difficulty. So they're the same units that we're playing with. Um, they have slight discounts to upkeep. But... They just uh, have a couple of different changes. The ones that are really interesting, um, AI summon logic is better. Um, AI no longer needs to have a standing threat near their leader or cities um, to summon. And then they don't need to defend city wall, cities with walls anymore. I forget where that is in here. Um, but I think that might actually impact free cities in multiplayer games. Um, making them more aggressive. They also have better economic focus. Um, and then they'll now clear ancient wonders um, when they're in annex range. So a couple of interesting changes there. Won't have too much impact for multiplayer, but it is nice to see um, improvements. Oh, I forgot this one. Tactical combat AI will now choose more varied spells. This is hugely important for... Um, multiplayer because we play with auto combat on all of our battles versus the AI. So this potentially could make us a lot more effective at auto combat because the AI will use better spells. Um, we've got some VFX changes as well as uh, like clear animations, but we're not going to cover that here because there is a lot to go over. Um, combat, they did modify the XP of soloing battles. So you only earn 25% of the total XP rather than 50%, um, which means it's just always worth it to bring a second, like if you're training your dragon ruler up, trying to rush experience on him, it's always worth it to bring a second hero with him, um, and share it, split that XP to get them 50, 50 rather than the dragon only getting 25% of that. Um, and then they added a small wait time in between turns to make them less jarring. That's cool. Um, it always freezes up on turn transitions in multiplayer. We'll see if that's fixed. Um, slowed. So in addition to slowing movement, the slowed debuff now disables retaliation attacks. This is great. This is going to be a huge buff, though, for snow spirits um, who are already really strong. Uh, we'll see how that goes, how strong they are. Uh, fortune and Misfortune reduce stacking from 5 to 3. 
Honestly, I think reduced fortune stacking is good, but misfortune is pretty underpowered. I guess reducing its stacking, no one really runs it anyways. Um, so it's not the end of the world. But yeah, it's it's one of the weaker effects and to reduce um, its effectiveness even further isn't great. But I think fortune reducing is pretty solid. Pretty much everyone is finding ways to stack fortune up to five times and crit chance is almost always guaranteed at 100 in the late game. Um, and evasion now correctly only works on physical ranged and magic attacks. That's nice. It was working on melee. Um, and then we have some cultural unit challenge, uh, balance changes. So defender heavy shield also gives plus one resistance. Defenders actually have, might have a really strong, uh, place in the meta right now because of the slower research and they're already just a strong tier two, um, optional mounted unit that I've seen some builds work with. Um, and plus one resistance is great on them because they already have really high defense. Uh, Bannerman, reduced defense by one, reduced damage of Banner Smite by two. I don't know if this was needed. Bannermen aren't really the strongest, but uh, maybe, maybe they're strong. Um, now that we slow down research and we actually might get to run supports. Um, Knight now has Giant Slayer and does an additional 30% damage to large targets. That's a nice buff for Knights. Um, they were already pretty strong, but they were weaker than Dark Knights, so it's nice to see a solid buff for them. Um, High Seeker Missiles was renamed to Seeker Arrows, and it no longer gives accuracy. Awakened only gives 3 Spirit Damage instead of 4. Dawn Defender gains 5 health to make up for that. Daylight Spear gains 1 Resistance. Awakener um, Seeker Missiles is replaced with uh, dormant Trait, Blinding Radiance. Um, and then Battle Mages now get Radiant Light um, instead of Seeker Missiles. I'm actually curious what this Blinding Radiance is. Um, we'll have to go into the game and see. I don't think they have that detailed anywhere in here. Um, and then... The hero skill coordinated strike is now an ex expert skill, so it's harder to get. And marked only has a 60% chance to apply rather than being guaranteed. Honestly, I didn't find that this was too strong. I feel like accuracy was already pretty solid from range units. Um, but I guess they wanted to buff this. Uh, Steel Shaper grant defense becomes a free action, but it increases its cooldown to two. I did see this. This is really cool. This means you can actually get a heal off in one turn with a Steel Shaper by granting defense, and then you can um, do Strength from Steel as well on the same turn. So pretty strong buff there. Industrious Bastion. Dude, Industrious is getting a lot of buffs. Industrious Bastion now has Defensive Masters, so it always enters Defense Mode at the end of its turn. And Inspired Defense is now a free action on a two-turn cooldown. This is insanely strong. Um, and this will also make it so that they're better in auto combat because for some reason the AI really prioritized casting inspired defense rather than attacking with bastions, which meant they just didn't do any damage and they, they had pretty dumb AI. So now that it's a free action, um, they'll cast it and then still attack and then end in defensive stance. So these changes together might really make Industria stronger um, with auto combat. I think this is probably what we're going to run um, with our first live game. And then Arcanist, reduce resistance to one. I'm not sure what it was before. Um, Soother now has Star Blades. Okay, that's fine. Not too notable there. Uh, Diplomacy, we'll just quickly glance over this. I don't think any of this will really affect multiplayer. Um, but trade value for equipment is back to normal. Uh, cost for declaring rivalry and friendship is now fixed instead of scaling. Um, the cost of boosting a free city allegiance is now shown on the button directly. That's just a nice change. Um, justified wars. Honestly, we start war declared, um, from now on, uh, or for the most part now, um, in multiplayer, we just start with uh, teams declared. So we're already at wars. But it's interesting to see that these Justified Wars are now flat Imperium increases rather than percentage, which I think for the most part is going to uh, buff that because you'd have to have 100 Imperium um, income naturally to match those, uh, which is definitely late game. 
And then added Imperium cost for releasing cities as your own vassals. Okay, this does apply to us. And this cost increases uh, as you release more cities. So the first city is free, second city 75, third city 120 or 150 Imperium, uh, 225, 300. So 75 um, Imperium per city that you release. Um, oh, and it caps at the fifth city. So 300 um, is the max you're going to pay for that. And then uh, sustained city spells that grant economic bonuses no longer work on vassals. Um, so you can't cast like Amplify Mind anymore on your vassals. A um, little bit of a nerf there, but you didn't really get too much benefit from it anyways. And honestly, like vassal um, strategies were pretty weak compared to just building your own empire. So I'm not sure if they should have nerfed that, um, but they did. Uh, Empire, Advanced Scrying, Force March, and Siege Project slot are unlocked earlier. That's great. Advanced Scrying now also increases vision range by two. It's fantastic. I, of, I often like to take Advanced Scrying just to scout out my enemy um, once I'm pushing in. So an extra two vision range is also really, really solid. Skilled Raiders now actually gives the 20% um, rather than 25 uh, Philosopher Soldiers now explains the amount gained for each rank in its unit description. That's great. That's the uh, Astral Tree that gives um, knowledge on rank ups. New Empire Skill added Advanced Logistics. This one's really cool. So it has the following effects. Move point costs of road outside the enemy domain is reduced to 3 instead of 5, which is absolutely insane. You can cover so much ground moving with... Uh, three movement points per tile. Um, so this is really going to enable roads to actually be useful. And then units gained fast embark and when embark, they have very fast movement speed. Um, so advanced logistics might be a really strong um, empire skill to pick up, just letting your move, move your empire around faster. Um, factions, blah, blah, blah. Uh, don't care about that. Um, elaborated with the form adaptations to mechanically uh, the different walk properties also state what the movement costs are before and after okay so they just explain that better um they fix a lot of issues with the traits just not displaying the correct values um, which are mod fix but it's nice to see in the base game now uh, quick reflexes reduce the evasion from 30 percent to 25 that's nice uh, defensive tactics now gives 10% evasion on top of the one defense and resistance. Um, that's really solid to make defensive tactics a little more viable. Uh, water adaptation has been renamed to swamp adaptation and it now gives river walk. Um, and underground adaptation now increases the annex range of, by one on cities in the underground. And then for society traits, Chosen Destroyers now has access to city structures that increase hero cap. Um, one can be built every city tier of the throne city. So you can build that. You can get four um, extra heroes. So you, I think you can have five heroes um, without penalty, including your, uh, including your ruler. Um, with Chosen Destroyers, this might make it a little bit more viable, but uh, still probably not. You're just not raising cities that often um, in multiplayer. So it's unlikely we'll see much play with this. Um, Origins, they're nerfing Wizard King, thankfully. Over Channel starts on a one turn cooldown. So if you get first turn casting, you don't have two spells there. Um, and then Wizard King now only grants plus five um, casting points every other level instead of every level. So you can only get 50 um, extra casting points from your Wizard King rather than 100. That's a great nerf. Um, it just really evens out the strength between um, Wizard King and Champion. And then as we'll see later, there are nerfs to uh, Dragon Rulers as well. The upkeep cost of each hero. So they're changing how upkeep works. The upkeep cost of each hero over hero cap has been changed from a flat 30 to 15% of the player's gross gold income. Um, which means that it is going to be way harder to go over cap unless you have no gold uh, upkeep, either from unit enchantments or um, unit enchantments or just regular gold unit upkeep. 
This does mean potentially because there's no flat cost, um, you could save up a bunch of gold, hire a bunch of heroes, and then just nuke your gold income. But if you have no upkeep cost, um, you won't pay any penalty. So you can potentially field more heroes here than you could with the previous one. But it is, in most games, going to have a much bigger impact. They implemented a limbo system for hero items. This is fantastic. When you unequip them, it takes X turns to and then become available for other heroes to equip. Um, it cannot be traded with other players. It cannot be sold. It does not count towards arsenal effects like the horde mechanics with the dragons. Um, that's all fantastic. And I think this X uh, turns is one turn, but it might um, actually scale up with how strong the items it are. For hero background traits, uh, they nerfed affinity heroes, so they now only grant one empire affinity instead of three. And then distracting now has a 60% chance to inflict distracted rather than 90%. I don't think distracting was particularly strong, but um, it is nice to see uh, them balancing these. I mean, you just compare this to like, uh, what's it called? Elementalist, which gives double experience and reduced upkeep to elementals. Like, I don't know. I think there are way stronger ones there. I do really think that it's good that they nerfed affinity heroes though. Um, so that we're not able to cover the empire affinity tree as quickly as we could before. Um, in terms of hero skills, precision trainer training no longer gives crit chance. That makes precision training pretty weak and niche. Uh, lightning evoker got damage buff. Endurance training uh, got a nerf to the HP by a little bit. Still really strong though. Weaver no longer works on summon spells or over channel um, from Wizard King. Big nerf to Weaver there. Um, those are most of what you want to be casting. But it's it's still fine. It's still viable to take. Um, and it looks like it does still work on spur to action, which is interesting. Channel power is now a free action that gives plus 50% boost to magic attacks for this turn only. Um, this is pretty strong and could be pretty broken with like a celestial, um, awaken instincts build where you cast this and then that turn you can cast like two more awaken instincts, get three action points, three turns of action points out with 50% damage boost. Um, so potentially a really cool build there. Summon Elemental um, now works in water maps. Okay, no one's playing the water maps. Comet Breath uh, for Dragon Rulers is now full action and it increased its range um, to five from four. So you can't move and use Comet Breath. Um, and then they rebalanced a lot of the Dragon Auras. So Order Aura, Materium, and Astral no longer give bonuses to the dragon lord itself um chaos aura is redesigned and now gives burning to adjacent enemies and it has a 90 90 percent base chance to proc a random negative status effect um it says on random enemies which makes me think maybe it's not adjacent um enemies we'll have to take a look at that um Maybe it's a random enemy that it's adjacent to. I don't know. We'll see. But if it's not adjacent, that could make uh, Chaos Aura really strong. And then now gives a random buff to adjacent allies. Interesting that they didn't say adjacent enemies. We'll have to look into that. Shadow Aura re is redesigned. It now gives slowed, which cancels retaliation attacks now, and weakened to adjacent enemies. And it now has a 60% chance to freeze adjacent enemies. That... Is pretty insane. Shadow Aura might be worth picking up. Nature Aura, big nerf, no longer gives regeneration to the Dragon Lord itself. That's the main reason we got it. And now gives Decaying to adjacent enemies, which is solid, but uh, without the survivability, it's much, much weaker. So we're going to have to go, kind of go back to the drawing board on how to uh, min max Dragon Rulers. And then Interface added a couple changes here. Um, Added notes to status effects to explain which stat effect effects counter each other. So like weakened versus strengthened um, actually cancel each other out. There are a lot of interactions like that. And now they'll just explain it. Uh, notification when excavating a province. Uh, that's fine. When a unit gains a benefit from pack hunter, animal kinship, defensive tactics, or overwhelm tactics, this is now displayed. Okay, so just more visibility on buffs and debuffs. Um, 
And then I don't really think we want to look at any of these other ones. These are small changes. Um, just readability and quality of life changes. Uh, for Pantheon, they added a blocked underground mist ground trait. Uh, the mega city trait now also gives those city structures that increase hero cap. Um, Ash and War Realm trait no longer gives its quest in team games. Uh, there's a new magic victory tutorial. Let's see. Tomes. Okay, so this is Tome Balance. Tomes always give plus five casting points regardless of their tier. So previously you got for tier three and four, you got 10 and tier five give you 15 casting points. So overall less casting points going around. Um, same with Wizard King. So generally just spell casting is going to take a lot longer, um, at least on the world map. Uh, scrying summon watcher increase mana cost from 100 to 150 that's solid watchers are really strong summon uh, amplification pylon now grants plus 50 percent damage for tactical summons rather than tactical spells um, i'm curious to see if spell amplification is still the same for heroes um, but we'll see that's a kind of interesting buff um, now tactical summons like don't last all that long um, I don't think hounds count, but maybe there could be a potential build. I mean, plus 50% damage is pretty huge. So there could potentially be a strong build with tactical summons. We'll have to see though. It has static charge, um, which deals damage to melee attackers with a chance to stun. Um, no longer has blight immunity. Summoning, um, astral keeper now works in water maps. Uh, so Chaos, Tome of the Horde, Spawnkin now gives 10% evasion to heroes instead of the damage. Um, and then non-heroes still get the buff, damage buff. Blaze of the Horde was reworked. It now does 20 damage to a single target with an extra 4 damage for each adjacent friendly unit. I don't know if that means... So maybe we like surround a unit um with our units and then for each one that's surrounding it it does a little bit of extra damage but overall just a huge nerf to blaze of the horde um, that build is basically dead uh fury of the horde now costs 20 mana and 20 casting points okay um wasn't a very strong ability to start with but uh, now it costs more um and battle seeker training now gives one defense one resistance one status resist and five hp to tier one units rather than the 20 percent damage all right materium artificer artisan blades no longer works on ranged units that's probably a good change this uh enchantment was too strong zephyr archers their zephyr shot was reduced from 34 to 30 damage and they no longer have slippery this is honestly, I don't like this nerf. Zephyr Archers weren't that strong anyways. Um, and Slippery was one of their saving graces because if you have any melee unit with a blink, they can just get on top of them and um, zone of control them, prevent most of their damage. Now they have Slippery too, so that, or now they don't have Slippery anymore, so they're going to be taking retaliation damage um, as they try and run away. And then Golden Realm added 10, plus 10 gold income to the uh, Reagent Refinery which gives gold based on um, the magic materials that you have in uh, your city provinces. This is solid. We didn't really build this too much before. Maybe we'll build it now. Um, Nature, Tome of Beast, Summon Wild Animal now has a chance to spawn Wyvern Hatchling or Slytherin Hatchling um, when on the right terrain. Glade Runner, um, Tracker's Mark now only applies to Marked. Um, so no more Sundered Resistance or Defense, which was the main utility of that. Glade Runner build is probably dead in the next patch as well. Um, so pretty unfortunate that they're nerfing Archer builds. We'll see if the change in research pacing um, actually helps them. But right now it's looking like Archer builds are just dead again. Um, and they weren't alive for all too long anyways. Summon Greater Animal now has a chance to summon a Slither or Adult Wyvern. Same as uh, Tome of Beasts for the lesser wild animals. Um, makes sense. Tome of Zeal, uh, they're buffing it by having Legion of Zeal apl apply to uh, range units as well. Faith, they removed the Imperium income from Covenant of Faith and added gold income instead. Um, it was really nice to get that Imperium income. The gold income might be solid too though, because then you can get plus 20 gold um, from each of your uh, vassals. 
Tome of Inquisition, Inquisitor Zeal. So um, its effect has been taken over by Legion of Zeal. So it's now uh, renamed to Inquisitor's Mark. It no longer grants zeal and accuracy. It instead grants a base 30% chance for applying Condemned, Weakened, and Slowed. That's kind of insane, actually. Um, and then the upkeep cost is increased to account for that. Uh, this is a really interesting unit enchantment for range units. We're going to have to see um, how strong that is. And this also applies to skirmisher units, so snow spirits can get a hold of that as well. Uh, sanctuary, increased mana income from the Sanctuary Special Improvement um, from 10 to 15. And it no longer functions as a spell jammer. Um, I don't know if we're really going to be building this. It does prevent... Uh, raising tiles, but um, but generally it was mainly only f useful as a spell jammer. Um, exaltation reduced Imperium income from Statue of the Leader from plus five to plus three, and uh, Shadow. Oh, that's weird that it doesn't have its own header here, but whatever. Um, the Reaper's Finger of Death now summons a decaying zombie, not a normal zombie. Um, Harvest Population is now a sustained city spell that blocks food income and costs 20 stability but gains plus 10 soul income. Uh, that's honestly kind of worse, but uh, we'll see. No one really plays with soul economy right now. Reapers are super weak as a tier 5 unit. Um, this isn't really even a buff. Um, yeah, we're just not seeing much there that uh, that's going to make it worth it. Uh, Tome of Evolution, Youthful uh, Regeneration, the combat spell now grants Resurgence to Evolve units. Um, and then Rapid Evolution Enchantment grants Slip Away rather than Resurgence. Um, so big nerf to Rapid Evolution Enchantment, but well deserved there. Draconic Vitality uh, now caps at level 5 when giving bonuses to heroes. So that is what 15 hero or extra health on your heroes rather than an extra 60 which was totally insane. So that's probably a good nerf there. Um, overall unit balance, they're reducing the optimal range um, for skirmishers, range units, and battle mages. They should not be nerfing archers and battle mages right now. Maybe skirmishers. Um, so this means they start getting long range penalties uh, when three hexes away rather than four hexes from the target. Range unit, legendary rank no longer gives accuracy. I just don't know where they're getting information that range units are too strong. Like if you look at our last game, we just got ran over um, in the end game with Glade Runners. Even though they're really strong in the mid game, um, against any good build, they just get absolutely run over. And these nerfs are not what they need right now. Uh, went through the various spells and abilities that summon zombies. Um, all those that summon zombies from a corpse now give full action points to the zombie when it appears. And then those that summon a zombie when the target is killed are unchanged. Um, Cavalry and Giant Slayer now appear on ability tooltips. Uh, dragons now display high maintenance um, tag that explains why they cost so much. They always had the high up upkeep cost, um, but they didn't have any ex explanation as to why before. Um, Plague and Stormscale Serpent's elusive ability renamed to Fleeting. To not clash with the elusive racial mind trait, sure. Um, and wyverns and birds move faster. This is actually a really cool change. Um, in terms of wildlife, dread spider matriarch um, now has eight blight resistance instead of immunity. Dire penguin now correctly has faster movement in swamps. Um, Bone wyvern now has 40 movement points and a 30% chance to apply poison. Fire Wyvern has 40 movement points as well, does a little bit of fire damage with attacks, and has a 60% chance to apply burning. This is really cool to see the Wyverns getting new abilities, because um, they were just such basic units. Um, so a little bit faster movement and status effects makes them a little bit more interesting. Young Fire Dragon now has a 60% chance to apply burning. It does a little bit of fire damage with its attacks. It has fire resistance and frost weakness. Frost Wyvern is now a Skirmisher. This is super interesting. Um, it has the Freezing Burst ability, which it doesn't detail here, but we'll uh, check it out in-game. It now has a 60% chance to apply Slow with its attacks. It has 40 movement points as well. 
Uh, young Frost Dragon has the same treatment as Fire. 60% uh, chance to apply slow. It does a little bit of frost damage and it has frost resistance and fire weakness. Um, frost Dragon now guaranteed applies slow with its attacks. Obsidian Wyvern, um, 40 movement points again, does a little bit of lightning damage. Um, Young Obsidian Dragon has a 60% chance to apply Electrified. Um, deals electric damage uh, with its basic dex, lightning resistance, spirit weakness, yada yada. Uh, Golden Wyvern now has a 30% chance to apply Distracted, and it has 40 movement points. Young Gold Dragon has that 30% chance to apply Distracted, and it does a little bit of Spirit Damage with its attack. It has Spirit Resistance and Blight Weakness, which is interesting. And then a Gold Dragon, ooh, buff for Gold Dragons, they were super strong. Um, it now has a 60% chance to apply Distracted with its attacks. Tide Spirits and Lesser Tide Spirits are now permanently wet, but they've had their damage resistances adjusted to compensate for that. And then Kraken Spawn now does 12 damage. I have no idea what they do anyways. Um, Living Vines Summoned by the Horned God are now survive for two turns, so they don't die immediately at the end of the turn. That's really nice to see. Um... And then world map, moving through a vassal city's domain um, will now provide friendly domain movement. So it's like moving through your own territory. And then starvation now destroys the province improvement. We're never starving, but that's uh, interesting to note. Um, so you do, like when you lose population, you actually lose the province improvement too. That's probably a good change. Um, the wizard tower ancient wonder no longer functions as a spell jammer. That's fine. They have a little bit of balance changes to magic materials. Um, they increased Imperial Essence income from 10 to 15. And then they removed the 5 Imperium income from Lucky Clover. So they basically just replaced it to the uh, set effect rather than individually. And then they added 10 food income on the Lucky Clover. And then we have a whole bunch of AI um, and bug fixes. Um, for the sake of brevity, I'm not going to go over those. Um, you can take a look at them if they want. They don't change too much, and a lot of them were already fixed in the mod that we play with. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for me, guys. I wanted to get this out to you quickly, um, so it's a little bit uncut. But uh, we're going to be streaming the new beta um, for the next couple of days on Twitch. And yeah, I hope to see you there. Cool. Thanks for watching, guys.